Hello. Welcome to E-Teachers 365, where education and culture meet. My name is Elaine Johnson, wife, mother, educator, master storyteller. So today I want to tell you a couple of stories. One, once when I was in third grade, there was an incident that occurred, the Challenger. Um, and I remember being in third grade and my teacher, I don't remember if she turned on the television or what happened, but I remember being very nervous and scared during that time because I knew something happened and people died and I believe with the challenger, a teacher actually died. So I remember feeling very nervous and upset when that occurred. Fast forward, September 11th, 2001, I have my own classroom and I am a teacher and I teach first grade at this point. I'm teaching first grade and Twin Towers hits. I don't know what to say to my students. They're in first grade, six or seven years old, so I choose not to say anything. Um, they, they go to lunch and all of the teachers were in the faculty lounge and were watching the news live. And I just remember thinking, we all said out loud, this is history, this is tragic. Oh my goodness, what is happening in our country? And I remember thinking, like, what, what do I say to my students or how do I, do I even say anything again? Because at the time I was teaching first grade. So we didn't say anything formally. Parents were very upset. They were coming to the school to pick up their children early. And, you know, we were just there. So I decided, you know what? I'm a master storyteller. Let me get out a book. Let me read a book to my students. And so I chose, now do you remember this book or not, Chicken Little. So I started reading a story and the next thing you know, the part happens where the sky is falling, the sky is falling and things are coming out of the sky. And my students are like, just like the helicopter, just like the plane. And I said, oh, right. And I don't know exactly how I ended the story, but I ended the story. And I think we did a math game or a number talk or some type of whip around the room. And then we ended the discussion. So that was my first year teaching. And that was one of the most traumatic things that occurred um, in my teaching career. So again, fast forward, January 6, 2021. Uh, we're teaching virtually, so I'm staring into the computer and I noticed there's messages coming through my phone and then a, a co coworker came to the door and I really had no idea what was happening. And so we were, it was our math class at the time. So they, they were in breakout rooms playing math games. And so I looked, at the news and I I want to say I couldn't believe what was happening but I actually could believe what was happening because the pot had been stirred for a number of months since the election so I looked at what was going on but I knew that was not anything that I would share with my students right in that moment because I wasn't sure of all the facts and I didn't want to um, share information that I didn't I wasn't sure about so as the day went on, we dismissed the class. I came home, read the articles, watched news, talked to my husband. I did not, at that point in time, let my son watch the news. My husband and I decided not to talk about it with him just yet because, again, we wanted to gather information, we wanted to know the facts, and we wanted to really present the information in a way that um, I thought he would benefit as a third grader. And we didn't really talk about it with my first grader at all. So the next day, the emails are coming in from administration, from my principal saying they support us and whatever we decide to do, please be understanding. Please make sure that the students feel comfortable and know that, you know, it's okay. To, it was okay to talk about, which I felt relief because as a third grade teacher, we have been talking about the election. We looked at the map. We talked about what does it mean to be a Democrat? What does it mean to be a Republican? We had extensive conversations during that week of the election about how people have a right to decide what's important to them. And so my students talked about taxes and they talked about the environment. They talked about education. We talked about health care. And, you know, each student was allowed to express their opinion. And I made it very clear that whoever you or your family believes in, that is absolutely your right because we live in a democracy and everyone has a right to their opinion. And so they were so excited. We're looking at the electoral map where they understand about the popular vote and the electoral votes. And so 
it was interesting and a little nerve wracking for uh, this my students as they would come in each morning. Mrs. Johnson, did you see or you know? So we're talking about it. it's a great conversation piece, and so eventually. The conversation kind of died down as we looked at the popular votes, the numbers were a certain amount, the electoral votes, the numbers were a certain amount, and they knew and understood that Joe Biden needed to get 270 votes in order to win the presidency, and he had already had the popular vote. So we went on to other topics for social studies and moved on. So this week we had been talking about New Year's resolutions and what are our goals for the new year and what were our favorite memories of 2020, if we could think of any. Um, so that next morning when I came in and I saw the emails and I thought about what am I really going to say to my students? How did I feel, you know, almost 20 years ago during 9-11? How did I feel as a third grader when I was nine years old, when the challenger hit? And so I decided I was going to wait. I like to start my class every day with Bill Withers, a lovely day. And so that's what we did. On Thursdays, we whip around the room virtually and we talk about what we're thankful for. And so students say, I'm thankful for having an education. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful that we live in America. And so I thought it was important to have a sense of normalcy, to know that something happened yesterday. And again, I didn't know who knew what, what parents had decided to share, but I knew I wanted to keep the routine going in my classroom. And so I did tell them, I said, guys, we've been focusing on new year, on the new year and new goals, but this afternoon we're gonna have a talk during social studies a little bit about politics and the election. So some kids kind of you know, looked or they had an idea, but I said, we're gonna talk about it during social studies. And so we went through our day and then during our social studies time, I pulled up a video on a library website about what is the US Capitol. Because I think, you know, as a teacher of third grade, I teach social studies. It's important for me to make sure that I stick with facts. And so I said, all right, guys, we're going to learn about what the U.S. Capitol is, what does it represent, and how is it used. So I told them, the U.S. Capitol is a symbol of democracy. Elected leaders work there. It is where Congress makes laws. The Congress, the Senate, and the House of Representatives goes there to meet and make decisions about our country. I said on January 6th, 2021, very upset Trump supporters with weapons stormed the Capitol. They wanted to interrupt the procedure of certification, the certification procedure, which is basically where the vice president, Mike Pence, members of Congress just formally count their electoral votes. Trump supporters wanted to stop that from happening, and so they stormed the Capitol. And by stormed the Capitol, I mean they had weapons and they went inside the Capitol, which is illegal. And I asked them if they had heard anything or did they know anything about what happened. I said, please be mindful that maybe not all parents share information with their children, so be um, mindful about what you say. I told them they could write a message just to me in the chat and then I would share what I thought was appropriate with the class or I would let them speak out. And so, you know, many of them said they were so disappointed. And some of them said that their parents were very angry. Some said that they were embarrassed. Now this was just um, the perspective from my class. And I told them, I said, I have to be honest with you. In my opinion, I also was embarrassed and disappointed. And one of my students said that this is un-American. And I'm sad that, you know, people acted this way. And I said, I agree. You know, it is not the appropriate way to behave. And I said, you all are on sports teams and you all know that you should show sportsmanship when you, when you lose. And so there has been, this is the only time in history where a president has decided that he actually won the election, even though there have been many people who have checked and double checked all of the different ways that he has said that the election was stolen and that is just simply not the case. There have been nothing to prove that anything he said is true. And so Joe Biden has won the election. And I said, it's unfortunate that adults decided that they didn't like the decision that was made legally and lawfully. And it's a part of our democracy. And instead 
they decided to interrupt formal procedures. And I said very, a lot of people were upset. Many people were upset. And I mentioned that the Capitol hadn't been attacked since 1814. And so that was a perfect opportunity. I said, take out your whiteboards and markers. Let's do the math. 2021, subtract 1814. I said, that's over 200 years that our Capitol has been safe. And I said, it's very disappointing that there were Americans who chose to do this. Um, and I did say specifically Trump supporters. So we talked about it a little bit. We didn't, I did not show too many pictures of what occurred. Um, I showed a couple of things. Um, and, you know, we had an honest conversation because I think that as an educator, as a parent, I tried to talk to the students the way I wish that my third grade teacher shared information with me. I told them that they are nine years old, some of them eight years old, and in nine or 10 years, you will have the ability to vote. And I hope that based on whatever you learn in life, that you make a decision that honors what you believe in and what you've been taught. And so it's up to you to make better decisions as adults. And they understood. They, they understood because they know if they do something wrong, they have to go to the office. Or they know that, you know, if they're on a team and someone loses, then they shake the other person's hand. And so I think that as teachers during this time, it has been extremely difficult to try to navigate all of these new things and to try to figure out how to best support our students. And what I have found and what I believe is that we have to be kind and we have to be honest and just, you know, intentional but also give ourselves grace. You know, we might um, not get it right. I still don't know if I said the right things and if I left something out or if I said too much, but um, I did receive positive feedback from parents. And one of the things that I made sure to say, even if I wasn't quite sure, is that I think that you um, are amazing students. I said, I, I think that you will make good decisions, great decisions as adults. And I also mentioned that you are safe because those were, that was one of the things that I did not feel um, as a, that's one of the things that I did not feel as a student. So please subscribe, like, comment, share if you appreciated this video. If you would like to see more perspectives or information about how I teach my students and how I teach my own third grader, um, please continue to look forward to more, to more videos coming soon. Like, subscribe, comment. eTeachers365 for education and culture meet. Thank you.